Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Jack Ford. Frozen apartments, chipping lead paint mold, that's just a few of the problems that have plagued New York City housing. Now, Mayor Bill de Blasio and federal prosecutors are discussing a potential deal to end an investigation into NYCHA. This agreement could require the city to give up to $1 billion to the agency over the next four years to make repairs and improve living conditions. But a vocal city council member is not on board. Richie Torres has challenged the mayor for allegedly, quote, dangerously engaging in secretive talks to settle a longtime federal probe into the city's embattled housing authority. And he joins us now to talk about all of this. Always good to have you here with us. As you and I were joking before, there's never a shortage of issues for Absolutely. us to talk about here. But none more important than this. Yeah, let's, because we, we've, yeah. Uh, there has been such a focus on this, on the, on the problems for the residents here for so long. Now, somebody who is not completely yeah. familiar might listen to what I just said and said, well, why is it a bad thing yeah. for the mayor to be engaging in settlement discussions with federal authorities who are conducting a probe of this yeah. that would result in money working its way to NYCHA to hopefully remedy these situations? So why is it more complicated than that in your mind, and why do you think this is a problem? Well, it's complicated and there are a few issues, so I'll do my best to unpack it. But the city, keep in mind that the city is legally independent of the housing authority. Yeah, and that's an important thing, because I don't think right. people think it's, New York City Housing right. Authority, it must be the city. Right. If you're suing the Department of Transportation, you're by definition suing the city of New York. But if you're suing NYCHA, you're suing an entity separate and apart from the city of New York. So the housing authority is legally independent of the city. Public housing is legally a federal program. Given those facts, on what basis can the U.S. attorney compel the city of New York to bear the cost of a consent decree? Never in the history of New York City has a mayor been expected to sign a consent decree with a multi-billion dollar price tag. That is without precedent in the history of our city. Let me back up for a second. Yeah. Why is it, I'm sure people are asking, yeah. why is it then if it's called the New York City Housing Authority, that it's not an entity of New York City. Because it was a program established under federal law. Right? And the, the central culprit here is the federal government. Right? The attempt by the federal government to force the city to fix, fix something that the federal government itself broke represents an unprecedented transfer of responsibility from the city, to, from the federal government to the city where it doesn't belong. So who should be paying for this? I think primarily the federal government. But, but keep in mind that if a consent decree, a signed consent decree, is essentially an admission of wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. It's an admission that the city did something wrong. And so that raises the question, what did City Hall do wrong? Right? We know that the Housing Authority falsified documents to the federal government for four years. Did City Hall have knowledge of those falsifications? Was there complicity? Right? Who knew what when? And before the mayor agrees to sign away a billion dollars of city tax dollars to an unaccountable court-appointed monitor, the public has a right to know the full truth. Let's assume there's a pool of money, comes from someplace. Yeah. Federal government, city, some combination of the two of them. You have that pool. How would you like to see it be administered? I see no need for a consent decree. We should provide NYCHA with billions of dollars to address the capital needs. There's no need for a federal monitor. NYCHA has been under scrutiny from the U.S. attorney, from the governor, from the state controller, from the city council, from the Department of Investigations. What NYCHA needs is money and efficiency, not more monitoring. How, do, how let's say we're able to get the money in some yeah. way, shape, or form. How do you then improve NYCHA's efficiency, their leadership? How, how can, again, as you said, you don't have control of it, yeah. correct, as, as the city council? We play an oversight function. Sure. So, so what can you do with regard to that oversight function that you think, recommendations that you can make that you think could improve the efficiency? I think beyond holding oversight hearings, we can attach terms and conditions to whatever funds we allocate to NYCHA. But if there's a federal monitor, it actually could paralyze our ability to hold NYCHA accountable for the expenditure of city dollars. You've got another, another face and voice in there and, that's making decisions. And there's one more piece. You know, the, the local constitution of the city is the charter. The charter reserves for the city council the powers of appropriation. The city council could theoretically enact a budget without the mayor. So on what basis can the mayor cut a billion dollar budget agreement with the U.S. attorney 
without even the approval of the city council. And, and you sent a letter to the, to the mayor's yes. office uh, outlining yeah. your concerns here. Have you heard anything back yet? No response from the administration. But I have a credible inside source that tells me that if the city fails to sign the consent decree, the U.S. attorney might actually have a criminal complaint that it could file against the city. So I want to know what is in that complaint? Yeah. What information is being withheld from the general public? So there's a lot in play there. Let me ask yeah. you one quick last question before we lose you here. We've seen a lot in the news recently about the water tanks yeah. here in New York City. And you've stepped in uh, in an attempt to, to take a look and perhaps remedy. Tell me first quickly, what's the problem and what can the remedy be? So the city has failed to properly regulate the maintenance of water tanks. There are water tanks that have gone years without maintenance or inspection. Uh, there have been cases where you've had pigeons, rodents, roaches in water tanks, mm -hmm. which could have a detrimental impact on the quality of and our we, water. We saw some of this in the story that we did last week. Exactly right. right. And so we're going to conduct an investigation into what is responsible for those failures. Why is the city failing to properly hold property owners accountable for the maintenance of their water tanks? Because we're concerned that bacterial growth in water tanks could threaten the quality of the water that we drink. Well, as and nothing is more important than water quality. Exactly. Well, as you and I said in the beginning, there's always stuff for us to talk about. Absolutely. Here. Richie, always a pleasure having you come in and Thank spend you. some time and share your thoughts. You'll be welcome.